I'm with uh, Spencer Jameson, the writer, director, and lead of At Capacity. Uh, hi, Spencer. Hello. Uh, hi. Yeah, just give us the brief lowdown on your short film, At Capacity. Yeah, At Capacity is about a woman who has kind of reached her bandwidth, and she's always taking care of everybody else, her sister, her family. She shows up to break up with her sister's boyfriend, and he's not there. <laughs> Um, and it's kind of, you know, a short romantic comedy about the ways in which a little bit of tenderness can be disarming and we learn new things about ourselves. Yeah, I like uh, what I like about the film is that it starts off with a, a tense situation. I mean, not to <laughs> not to spoil it, but, you know, you have two people who are uh, who are doing a proxy breakup for other people and and find love in that and uh, so the film starts at at high tension right and then you play out the romance the rom-com aspect of it there um yeah i mean how how did the story come about and how you know what was it like developing it yeah so first of all your dog is adorable <laughs> <laughs> anyone who knows me knows that like i'm instantly dr distracted by cute animals <laughs> um but the story came to be because i'm I saw a tweet from Josh Molina and I guess it was a joke tweet. They were talking about rebooting the West wing. And mm -hmm. as a teen, that was one of the shows I think that was it really, I was a bit obsessed with it and mm -hmm. I loved the ensemble. I loved the political commentary. I just thought it was so smart that I was like, well, what would my version of that be? So the, initial draft of this was going to be a proof of concept for a series about staffers and these two randomly meet. And then the next day you find out that like Ari is now hired at the same job as Mia. Mm -hmm. It then kind of grew into something else where I was like, Oh, I, I just want it to be its own little container. Um, and you know, I grew up on romantic comedies, the West wing, political dramas, uh, K dramas, so it's mm -hmm. all just a, a bit of an amalgamation of all those things. Yeah, I, I guess I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm impressed by just the overall quality of the film. It feels, uh, Thank you. you know, for a short film, especially, it feels very cinematic. And I, I imagine you didn't have a lot of money for it, like the rest of the indie filmmakers. <laughs> no. uh, uh, it was very, very family and friends. Uh, we got to shoot it back in Richmond. So we have a lot of, you know, the Richmond, Virginia film scene mm -hmm. and Virginia film scene is is very robust. And we have a lot of people that nurtured us there as filmmakers, me and my brother. And so mm -hmm. we were able to just call on, you know, friends, family to kind of invest their time. Uh, I love what I love that you said it looks very cinematic. Uh, that mm -hmm. was my goal. I wanted it to look like a, a feature, but in short form, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, and I worked with an incredible DP, Kuni Fire Oho Ohi. Um, I normally call him Kuni, so saying his whole his whole name kind of tripped me up a little bit. Uh, but we talked for a long time about how I wanted each frame to feel like uh, you would you were walking through a museum. So yeah. I think we really collaborated on that, really playing with color. I wanted it to feel vibrant and warm and opulent. And I'm really grateful for him and for our colorist, Matt West, who also was an editor, that it was really a labor of love to make it feel, you know, cinematic in that way. Yeah, it's interesting because we've been we've been talking a lot lately about, uh, I mean, the bandwagon we've been drumming this year is Hollywood's not the dream. You know, you, mm. you know you're, you know, it's, it's becoming kind of an elite uh, community there, but the advantages now are that you talked about the Richmond film community. Um, you know, can you talk a little bit about uh, how you got into it and how it's developed you and things like that? For sure. My, I would say that a lot of it is because of my older brother, he mm -hmm. started making films with this kind of independent film scene. Uh, they would do monthly shorts. It was called project res. Mm -hmm. And so I was one of his first actors, <laughs> you know, he's 16 yeah. years old and I'm, I'm in his films and that's how he met Cooney. So I've known Cooney for, you know, since I was a, a kid, uh, they came up and um, I think what it is, is just this energy of support, mm -hmm. this Southern hospitality, but a desire to make things that feel nurturing. Mm -hmm. So when I was putting together the team, when I called upon M Macy West and Madbox Maid, 
a local production company there. I was like, you know, anybody that we hire, anybody that we bring on, I want them to feel like this is something that brings a bit of peace and ease because everything was so tumultuous, Mm -hmm. you know, last year with the strikes. So we filmed it last June and I really, my goal was to set the tone for set where it's like, we really just want to play, right? That's where Mm -hmm. we all got into filmmaking or, you know, I started in theater as well in Richmond and I'm fortunate and I'm grateful that I was able to kind of give that back in in the sense of what this film was able to do. Um, Richmond, you know, we've had big productions come through, whether that's Lincoln, um, I believe Homeland was filming Mm -hmm. there for a season, Turn, you know, so it's like people have these deep skill sets and I'm hoping that like one of my dreams would be to, you know, produce a television series there. Yeah. To, to be able to create opportunities and jobs for people to work and live with their families, um, <laughs> to go back home and spend some time with my family. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, cause I, I live near LA and, mm-hmm. uh, and Hollywood and, and, you know, as much as we're seeing work f- flow out of the city nowadays, uh, it's great to see it, you know, see uh, communities across the nation just kind of band together, pool resources and be able to create films. And I feel like that's the, I feel like that's the, you know, balm or salve to what's happening right now is that Mm -hmm. we're banding together a bit more. I'm in a group, I'm in a filmmakers group chat with a whole bunch of women that are just like making shorts and we're all submitting to festivals. And um, right now, one of them is now making a feature with her husband. And what I'm finding in that community is that we're super transparent. We're super Mm -hmm. supportive. If we have, you know, I just AD'd on another short film and I was, we lost our sound person and I was able to go to the group chat and be like, okay, what are the resources? Who do you all know? Um, In really healthy ways where it's like, I think sometimes people get a little jaded in the industry or living in Hollywood and it's been nice finding community with people that are just good humans. And yeah. so it's, it's, it's healing, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, I, I mean, I hear this a lot, especially when you, the further you move away from Hollywood, but it's this, it is this support. It's just people want to work, uh, you know, money, money is a thing, but it's not the driving thing. And, right. uh, and it's still about the art. And so I would, I would make assumptions then that uh, in terms of equipment, lighting, locations, things like that, those are all, you know, those are all community uh, driven as well. You know, who right. has yeah. With, yeah, that's yeah. Keep going. Keep doing that. <laughs> Thank you. I will. I will. So, you know, I hope I want to make a feature next. So or a sci fi action short. I've got two scripts. I'm like, OK, which one's going to how am I going to get financing? How to make these mm-hmm. happen? <laughs> so uh, let's get back to that capacity. What were kind of yes. your influences in terms of I, I mean, romances are not easy to pull off. Um, what what are your influences and what are what were kind of things you you uh, you know you knew you needed to do in order to pull this one off? Well, I, I really think the seed of romance, you know, and any love story is <laughs> honestly is the seed of any sort of conflict or filmmaking where it's just we're looking for connection, we're looking for mm-hmm. um, Someone who can, for me, I feel like Ari really disarms Mia in a way that's unexpected for her. Mm -hmm. But when you go back to the rom-coms of the 80s, the 90s, and the early 2000s, there was a bit of wit. And they were super character-driven. And I think that a lot of people assume, you know, rom-coms are very formulaic. But I think what it is that we keep coming back to, or I keep coming back to, Mm -hmm. when I want to just sit down and enjoy something and feel like a breath of fresh air are the characters. And for this, there were a couple things that I was really wanting to do. Um, During the pandemic, my brother and I ran through, and another good friend of ours who actually did the soundtrack for this, Dana McCoy, we ran through K-dramas. Like I was not interested in watching anything super um, grotesque, anything super stressful. I wanted to watch something that was rich in culture, in relationship. And even though you would see that kind of the same beats happen throughout the seasons, um, you know, in the six episode arc, it's like, okay, halfway through something happens about episode 12, they go on a trip. What was so interesting were the nuances of character and relationship. 
So I was like, okay, if I can bring a little bit of that, something sweet, something sweet that also has depth, that is what the goal of At Capacity was. And I knew I wanted to work with um, my friend Jake, who is a classmate from the Yale School of Drama. Mm-hmm. We were, um, we were, he was one of my first scene partners. And immediately I was like, okay, well, I know that we've got chemistry. I know that if I'm going to be jumping in and out of in front of the camera and behind the camera, I know that he will be able to take care of his mm-hmm. role. He'll be able to respond to kind of our shorthand language of, you know, like, if I'm like, okay, I need this beat to be a little bit shorter. It's not coming from another actor. It's coming from somebody that he respects as an, as an artist and as a director. Um, and then I was like, I'm really interested in the ways in which people of color, black people, Asian people, Latin people relate to one another in the intersections of that. And I was like, I've never seen someone who is, you know, Korean American being adopted by black parents. I, I want to do, you know, more explorations of Audrey and of Maxine's characters, because it's like, they have full lives as well that I've kind of created for them and, and, and different themes where it's like with Maxine, you know, why does somebody stay in a relationship with someone who's bad for them? For Audrey, she's a filmmaker. So like, she's, that's how she makes sense of the world. You don't get to see all of that because you had to cut some things, you know, to keep it, to keep it within a certain length for a short, but, um, just rich i think it's about rich characters and about chemistry yeah yeah well i mean i'll i'll throw on to that there's there there's an authenticity that comes with because uh, the situation they're in is so disarming that they that the two characters present themselves as themselves and, and mm-hmm. that's what i mean by authenticity and uh and so right away there there's no pretense of you know the game you know presenting yourself in a certain way to feel attractive they're, they're, they meet together and they're just them, uh, bare bare bones. And that's I found that that device of the uh, of the uh, proxy breakup to to really enhance that to really start them off on the right foot and, and kind of you know jump your jump your story ahead a few steps where you know where you get rid of all that that games we play when we date. Right. Like I'm so I'm so grateful that you said that. I'm so that was that was something I really wanted to hold on to is like kind of uh, making the meet cute be something that is, I've never seen it before. I was like, what would happen if this happens, you know? But it does make it so it's not like they're on a date. And so they're not performing for each other. They're just presenting, like you said, their most authentic selves. And then, you know, as they get into the conversations around morality and around, you know, what do we do? And I think, I think, more and more I'm realizing how relevant the political conversation is Mm -hmm. because it's like we can, so many of us just want people to live well. And I want to believe like, I'm a, I'm a very hopeful person. Um, I want to believe that things will progress well, Mm -hmm. especially in the, in the United States that we can take care of one another. Again, it comes Mm -hmm. back to what the filmmakers are doing now. We're creating communities, but I think on a, on a larger scale, creating communities but it's like what it, what happens when we're searching for the same, you know, the same mm-hmm. moral ground, but we have different ways of achieving that. Yeah. How do we have conversations about it? You know, so that was a question I had, and was you know, yeah. Well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> was working through it. I know. Um, <laughs> well, hey, I I appreciate that you're trying to do that, and uh, I hope I hope we uh, as a country head in that direction. <laughs> Right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> so, so let me. Uh, yeah. So we're about to end here. Uh, so, is it on the festival circuit, or how can we see it? At yes, festival? yes, it's actually premiering this Sunday. I don't know when this is. I don't know when this is going to yeah, air. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it out before. Then. Okay. Well, but, it'll be uh, this Sunday, July twenty eighth at 7.45 at the Regal LA Live. It's premiering at LA Shorts International Film Festival. Thank you, LA Shorts, for being our world premiere. We're really grateful for that. Uh, And I hope that, you know, people can experience a little sweetness with it, a little tenderness, and be reminded that sometimes it's nice to just allow folks in, you know, and to be our most most authentic selves. There's also a trailer that we cut together in Mm -hmm. the style of the, like, you know, 80s 90s rom-coms with the voiceover (laughs) yeah (laughs) really wanted to lean into it 
um, especially because we're playing in, uh, into a little bit of a more current nostalgia. I'll say that because it's black and brown people falling in love instead of just white people. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is the seed of those rom-coms that raised me. So, yes. Thank you so much for having me today. Well, thank you. And, and good luck. I, you, you know, continue that journey. That's all I can say. And, uh, and you know, we're here to support independent filmmakers. And uh, yes, go forth and do well. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Bye. Thank you. Bye.